One of my absolute favorite things about this time of year is that we get to wear sweaters. So in today's video, I wanna go over kind of a sweater guide 101. Some of the things that I've learned over the years, we're gonna cover some of the silhouettes that I really like and some that I think are really versatile for your own wardrobe. Some of the materials I like to look for in my sweaters. Some of my favorite places to buy great sweaters. And then also just a really top line overview of how you can care for your sweaters so that they last as long as possible. And then, in my next video after this, coming later in the week, I'll be sharing a lookbook featuring some of my own personal sweaters and some of my favorite ways to style them to help give you maybe some inspiration because I know as we get to the end of the season, it can really start to drag on and sometimes the inspiration can be lacking for the cold weather pieces because we just want it to be spring already. So let's hop right into the video. When it comes to the sweater silhouettes or styles that you can choose from, it seems like they're being updated constantly, but today I'm gonna to cover some of the basic ones that I like for my own personal wardrobe. These are some of the styles that I think are really easy to work with. They go pretty much with everything, so you don't really have to worry about them potentially not jiving with another piece in your wardrobe because they're really easy to style. First on that list is gonna be a basic cardigan. I like this to be slightly V'd in the front, a little Little bit of a dip because I'm a little bit on the shorter side and smaller framed and I like how it opens things up but I also have some that are just a standard crew neck. I think a lot of times people think of cardigans as being matronly or a little bit outdated but I don't think that's true. I think they're really nice and it's definitely something to consider having in your wardrobe because you can easily throw it on a lighter piece for example during spring and summer when it's really cold inside and really hot outside. It's an easy layering piece you can take on and off and then and also they come in so many different colors and styles so you can really wear them year-round. I'm a huge fan and I have quite a few in my wardrobe which I'll share in, in the video that I mentioned earlier uh, coming later in the week. And then for the non-cardigan sweater styles or silhouettes, there are three basic ones, a V-neck, a crew neck, and a turtleneck. I really, really love all three. I tend to gravitate mostly towards crew necks, as you can see I'm wearing one today, because I think they layer really well. You don't really have to overthink it. You can throw them on top of most things, and they tend to be really flattering. Now, if you're someone that's maybe a little bit on the shorter side, you want to really open things up, or you tend to be heavy chested, you'll probably probably prefer a moderate v-neck. It tends to draw the eye down, making you look taller and thinner, and it's something that's really nice to wear, especially in the spring, because you want to be open and a little bit lighter than you have been all, summer, all winter long, but you also don't want to be freezing. So it's a nice happy medium for the two. You're not totally exposed, but you're also kind of embracing spring a little bit. And then of course you have turtlenecks. I really love turtlenecks. I like them in a really chunky knit. I think it's super super cozy and it looks really nice layered underneath jackets during the winter and the fall especially. Now when it comes to sweater materials, I really like natural fibers. I think that they are so wonderful because they're really cozy, they're really comfortable to wear unless you have an allergy. Definitely double check you're not allergic to wool or anything because that will be very uncomfortable for you. But they're very warm but also breathable. So I really love cotton wool, cashmere, and then any blend of those. Another one that I think is really nice is to take one of those warmer fibers and then throw in some silk. I think that it is so luxurious, it feels so soft, and it's still warm, and it also oftentimes give you, gives you a slightly lighter weight uh, material that you can wear more easily into spring. So if you want a sweater that you can wear kind of year round, I recommend either cotton or a light wool, a very, very thin wool. They make really beautiful fine wool sweaters nowadays. And then find something with a little bit of silk mixed in and you'll be living in the lap of luxury and you'll feel so cozy, but also not suffocating as it starts to get warmer. If you've been to this channel before, then you know that I can't have a sweater guide without mentioning Everlane. I have quite a few of their cashmere sweaters and cotton sweaters, and I think they're fantastic. They're very reasonable, they're very, very comfortable to wear, and they've got a really nice cut. So the one that I'm wearing right now is kind of a looser fit, and I personally really like this style. It's something that's oversized, but not too baggy, so it complements my personal preferences very well. And then also their standard crew necks are wonderful in cashmere. I think they're they're so nice and if you're looking for a basic sweater to kind of 
segue into cashmere potentially or just to have something luxurious that you can wear regularly then i think they're a really great place to look at similarly to everlane i've had very good luck with grana they make very luxurious pieces at a very reasonable price point and i have one of their crew neck cashmere sweaters it's so soft and really comfortable and the color is really nice and then also their turtleneck which is really really nice because it's not too tight around the neck i find that grana does petites a little bit better. They don't market it exactly as petites, but I find that it fits more like petite sizing. So if you're kind of in between or maybe you've tried Everlane and they ran a little too big, then consider looking into Grana because I really like them. And the newest affordable cashmere retailer on the market is Nottam. They offer a $75 crew and v-neck cashmere option that's really nice. It's a unisex size, so it fits both men and women, and they have um, a couple to choose from. From. I have the smallest size and it fits oversized but not crazy baggy so I think it's a flattering kind of a uh, big look you know it's kind of what you want your sweaters to look like but you don't look like you're drowning in them for reference if you're new I'm 5'3 and 3 quarters and um, I tend to favor petite sizing because I have shorter limbs and stuff but it fits really well I've also had good luck with the material it hasn't pilled excessively and then also it's worn really well it doesn't look tattered or old but I will say that I've heard the opposite from other people so be mindful of that definitely check not only my personal opinion and reviews but also others available on the internet because you don't want to buy something that's affordable but not well made now if you really like the look of a fisherman sweater a traditional fisherman style sweater in cotton then I definitely recommend LL Bean I have their their classic fisherman sweater and I really love it it's really cozy really comfortable it's slim because I got it in a smaller size I think I sized down but you can very easily size up the proportions stay very very nice and it gives you that kind of relaxed um, by the seaside Diane Keaton in something's got to give kind of vibe and I think it's very flattering it's a really nice heavy cotton but still soft and very very comfortable to wear and then of course secondhand vintage thrift stores eBay Etsy all of those are fantastic retailers for sweaters I have some of my absolute favorite sweaters from places like that and they are beautiful they are in luxurious fabrics but they were a steal so if you are looking Looking to incorporate more of these materials into your wardrobe maybe you want to start purchasing things that you can have around for many years but you don't have upwards of 75 to 100 dollars to spend on something then definitely check thrift stores vintage shops antique malls and then ebay and etsy you will be amazed what you can find in incredible construction and silhouettes at a fraction of the price i've paid as little as 20 dollars for a cashmere sweater before so don't hesitate to check there i have um, a, a guide all about shopping secondhand vintage i'll link it here for you but definitely try to dip your toes in because you can get some amazing pieces that are not only beautiful but also oftentimes very unique which helps really add something nice to your personal style now I want to share some of my top line tips for caring for your sweaters and storing them so they last a really long time. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I can definitely go into more detail in another video. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. But these are just some of the top pointers to keep in mind. So my first tip is to hand wash them. I know it sounds tedious. If you're not familiar with hand washing your clothing, then it can be a bit of an adjustment. But once you get used to it, you're gonna take pride in caring for your clothing and really enjoy the process of making sure that something lasts a long time and I find that for me hand washing is um, almost therapeutic in a sense I know it sounds really weird but it is because I'm sitting there kind of reminding myself of all the time and energy that I put into my wardrobe and all the time and energy I put into choosing that particular piece and I really want it to last a long time so I hand wash in a bowl of lukewarm water with um, a very mild detergent. I'll link the one that I use down below. It lasts a very long time. So I know the price can seem a little high at first, but it's a fantastic product. And then once it's done, um, all the dirt's out and all the grime is out, I will wring it very, very gently. I don't go crazy because you don't want to 
um, misshape the sweater and cause it to stretch out or anything. And then I will dry it on a towel draped across a clothing rack. And then also if you're really, really short on time with cashmere and wool sweaters, you can actually fold them, put them in a Ziploc bag, and then put them in the freezer. Leave them in there for about an hour and they will be disinfected. It's a really, really good tip and something that I've done um, when I've been in a time crunch before. Another very important part of sweater maintenance is removing the pills. So oftentimes you'll have a sweater in a material like cashmere or wool and those fabrics do have a tendency to pill. So those are those little balls of fabric that you see and they can make the sweater look very tattered and really old when it's really not. So just taking those off um, can really revive it and make it look brand new. I like to use a sweater comb for this. It's something that you can find pretty much anywhere. Um, they're very inexpensive, but if you don't have one, you don't want to buy one, and you really just want to kind of handle it another way, then you can use a dull razor blade. Just a razor that you use to shave your legs. Um, make sure that you can run it against your hand without causing any uh, rips in your skin. And as long as you can do that, you can use that on your sweater. Run it very delicately along any pills and they'll come off and it'll be so simple. You then just clean the razor and the sweater will look basically brand new. It's also a really good thing to keep in mind when buying a sweater secondhand, because sometimes you'll find sweaters that are beautiful. They look basically brand new, except it's hidden beneath all of those pills. So if you are in a store, for example, touching a secondhand sweater and you're not positive if it's salvageable, then go through and try to remove some of them with your fingertips. If they come off easily, then it's something you can probably um, handle. And then my last two tips for sweater care has to do with storage. So you never want to hang your sweaters. I know I've displayed my sweaters on hangers in past videos, but that's just for the video. And I really should have clarified that in those videos, because if you store them like that, you can um, cause permanent marks in the shoulders. So definitely take them off the hangers and fold them nicely and put them in a drawer or one of those nice colander display things that you can get for your closet. And then if you're worried about bugs or moths and you just want to keep things feeling and smelling fresh, then you might want to consider putting a lavender sachet in your drawer. It's something that I do with all of my clothes, but I particularly like it for my sweaters because my sweaters end up smelling like lavender and I really like lavender. And then the last thing I want to say before I close out this video is that if you ever feel discouraged about spending so much time on your sweaters, maybe you were like, oh, I really don't want to hand wash and hand dry and go through all of that and depill and worry about moths, then maybe it'll help you to think about um, investing in something that you can have for many years to come and then potentially hand down. I have a sweater in my collection that I don't wear because it's far too precious to me, but it belonged to my grandmother and it was passed down to me and it still looks brand new because it was looked after with such love and affection and cared for really well. So if you like that type of approach, then that might be the motivation you need to really take the time to care for your sweaters. Spend time finding those that are gonna be perfect for your wardrobe and then really look after them because it can be a beautiful thing that you can look at fondly for years to come and then even potentially pass down to future generations. If you'd like to see more videos like this, along with some of my top tips for doing more with less, I would love to have you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.